Hello. In this video, we continue to explore how to combine the power of Blue Prism with SAP GUI scripting in a code stage while working with ALV grid elements. This time, we'll take a closer look at the SAP GUI scripting API, how to retrieve ALV grid attributes such as number of rows and number of columns, how to position in a specific row within a grid table, and how to add new rows into a grid. So, let's begin. Because Blue Prism allows you to interact directly with SAP GUI scripting API, it gives you a lot of flexibility when you are working with GUI elements. The API is fully documented on the SAP website. And in the documentation you will find information about objects, methods and properties which can be used in the context of Blue Prism in a code stage. For example, in the grid view object, we can use the row count method to retrieve the number of rows displayed in a particular grid. There are many other methods here that uh, you can control, such as adding rows, uh, removing rows, updating rows, getting some other properties for the cells, positions, and so on. So let's take a look at how we can retrieve the number of rows and the number of columns in a particular grid. I have added those uh, two variables already. Let's bring a code stage and I'm going to name this uh, code stage uh, to get the properties uh, on the grid. Let's add those two input variables. Actually, we're going to set them as output variables because we want to get them. So here goes uh, the first variable we're going to bring is a column. And then we're going to bring the number of rows. So in our code stage, we will uh, open with setting up the session. This is the typical heading of a code stage interacting with SAP. And we've covered that in previous videos before. And now it comes the important part, which is we want to get the rows and columns for the grid. But what is the grid reference name? So I'm going to set up the recorder here. And all I have to do is just position myself and double click within the grid. Because that is the reference we're looking for. So I'm going to pause the recorder. I'm going to open up the file that it produced the code. And let's take a look. So first is that heading that is not necessary for us and we are interested in the name of the grid internally as defined in the SAP environment. So here's the name and we're going to use that to actually declare the object within the code stage. So that is the reference to the grid and what I want to do is create an object called grid that refers to that and I'm going to declare it as an object. So um, grid as object. So now I can refer straight to the grid object name instead of using that full um, reference. Okay, so now we have the grid uh, declared and we can start utilizing some of the methods or the, um, interacting with the properties of that grid. So let's get the table uh, properties and we'll collect the row and column counts. So I'm going to use the row variable to retrieve the grid row count. And I'm going to use the column variable to retrieve the column count. 
just make it pretty check the code if there is uh, just to see if there are any errors they are known I'm going to minimize this screen reset and run so we're executing the code and look at the variables that were retrieved there are 9 rows and 15 columns Let's say you want to position within a grid on a specific row and you want to get uh, a specific uh, column value retrieved and well, we also want to update that value to something new, something different. Uh, let's do that. I'm going to declare two data elements. The first data element I'm going to call the old distance and this is the uh, data element that I will retrieve the current content so I can capture that and I'm going to declare the second variable called new distance and I'm going to update that variable with the content 999 so now we have the current captured in the old distance and the new in the new distance um, so let me bring that in the context of the code stage. I'm declaring the input as new distance. That's what I will pass on to the code stage. And my output will be the current uh, distance or the old distance as I called it. And that's the output. So we're good. Now um, let's position on a specific row. And we don't have to do that to get values because we're passing on the row index. But I'm just doing this for illustration. So grid, it's our object, current cell row, and we're passing the row index. So now we are positioned within the grid on a specific row. Next we'll get the current distance. So the old distance data element equals to our grid dot get cell value and we are passing the row index the column name within the grid and next we're going to modify so first let's say uh, we want to update the distance with the new distance and to that we will modify cell passing on the row index the column name and the new value which is in the new distance variable let's check the code for errors there are no errors so we're going to expect to see that updated with 999 um, we're going to do this on row 5, so we start with 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's the fifth row. Let's reset and run it. So that's our code stage. And there you go. We see the distance was updated to value 999, and the old value was retrieved in the old distance um, variable or data element. And let's move on to the uh, next example. Let's say you want to add new records into the grid. And I have here a collection that I have already declared and initialized with content. This content could be coming from an Excel spreadsheet, for example. So to new flight information. And I want to insert these new records in position 6, that is row 6, 
starting with 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. That's our position 6 into the grid. We're going to loop through the collection. We're going to position into the collection. So for the positioning, we're going to invoke the current cell row method for the grid passing on the row index. And then I'm going to hit the control button add row, which I have already mapped. So instead of using a method in the code, I'm actually interacting with some of the buttons that are available, uh, which I have mapped here in my application modeler. So I have a few buttons there, including the add row. And finally, we will update the new, newly added row with the input values. And to do that, I'm going to use the modify uh, cell method for the grid, passing on the row index, the uh, column name, and the value. So let's see this in action. I'm going to step uh, through it. So here we are in the loop first record. And then we positioned into the grid. We are hitting now the button add row. And we're going to update the newly added row with the values. Let's do for the second record, same thing, position. We're going to add row and update with the new values. And that's how you do it. Well, this concludes our video demonstration. Thanks for watching.